Hello and welcome to Endurance TV. Today I'm in the studio with analyst Rauli Juva to discuss Harvia. Hello Rauli and welcome. Hi, Hi Pia, thanks. So uh, you published an extensive report on Harvia in late September. What was the core message on the report? Uh, I guess the core message is that, that it's a very high quality company and, and we, we believe that also the outlook is pretty good so they will continue to to grow and, and uh, create value basically in the coming coming years as well but but the valuation is, is on the on the high side in yeah. comparison to that yeah so high valuation but a stable company mm, yeah. basically um, so it seems that Harvia has several competitive advantages can you elaborate a bit on these yeah uh, <coughs> the key key uh, competitive advantages as we see them are basically related to the production firstly so they are pretty much vertically integrated so they produce most of the stuff uh, they sell themselves and they, they also design and produce the kind of some parts and, and, and tools and kind of beyond with, with, with what the typical uh, son or, or hitter maker would would, would do mm. and and on, on top of that they are the the, the biggest uh, company in their industry and especially in the traditional saunas so they have a, a scale advantage in the in the production side in particular but of course in, in general as, as, as well so that's that's the second one and then maybe thirdly I would highlight the, the brand so they've mm. been in the market for quite a long time already with the Harvia brand and then, then, then they have uh, for instance in the US the almost heaven sauna brand seems to resonate quite quite well and then in the professional side the EOS brand which they acquired so so they have also strong strong brands and, and position in the in the marketplace so so those are the, the main ones as, as we see it. Mm. And I assume the Harvia brand is like really known in northern Europe and maybe in Europe in general? Yeah in traditional sauna markets especially in the Nordics and then, then I, I wouldn't say Amongst the consumers, probably mm. not 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 that much in Central Europe, but but in the inside the industry and, and yeah. like the, the then it's more more professional saunas and, and professional installers also, so they they most likely know it. Yeah, the name mm. brand, so yeah. to say. Yeah. Um, there has been some ch big changes in the market in recent years. Mm. First, of course, with the COVID pandemic that boosted mm. demand quite a lot, and then Russia invading Ukraine mm. and that fo fo forced companies basically forced companies yeah. to leave Russia. Uh, what longer term effects do you see that these have on Harmia or in the market in general? Yeah, well, the pandemic basically shouldn't have much effect if we look long enough. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in the short to mid term, it had huge effect first, uh, increasing the demand, and then, and then kind of the the, the 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 decline after that. But it shouldn't really have, have that that much an effect on the long term. I, I think, at least, uh, Russia obviously it's it's. Uh, one of the largest sauna markets in the world and, mm. and was also a meaningful market for Harvia before and that's now completely out of the picture for the time being at least so so that, that of course takes a meaningful kind of potential market mm. away from from Harvia but that's that's the way things are at the moment yeah yeah I, I seem to remember that the share for Harvia of several million euros from the Russian yeah, market yeah yeah it was a, a, a even about 10, 10 million mm. before before the pandemic. Uh, so, what was it? It was like between five and ten percent of the yeah. company. So, it, you know, it wasn't huge, but still, still a meaningful part. Yeah. So we have to wait and see what happens mm. when hopefully the war ends. At yeah, some point yeah, yeah. That's that's probably quite quite far in the future mm. that we would see companies entering Russia again. Yeah. yeah. So um, Harvey estimates that the replacement market for or demand for saunas and mm. spa facilities accounts for about 60% of the global market. Mm. Um, how has the economic downturn affected this part of the market? Oh Yeah, well, that's a good question since we had kind of a simultaneous economic downturn mm. and, and the kind of aftermath of COVID. So what, 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 what is the impact of, of, of what this is? <laughs> is yeah, a hard. Fair, fair question and, and <laughs> probably no one has the answer for that. But obviously it has a negative effect. That's, that's for sure, of course, that the, when the consumer purchasing power de declined, that, that definitely had a negative effect on the, on the sauna markets mm. as, as well, both on the replacement side and then also actually in the, in the new yep. build side through mm. the kind of um, lower amount of uh, apartments built and, and, yeah. and sold so yeah negative impact but it's you know I 
can't Hard guess. To, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't start guessing what, what is the impact of, of, of which component. But of course now there are signs of at least the, the interest rates going down, so maybe maybe there's a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel yeah, slowly. Yeah, definitely there is, and we have seen that already in Harvest numbers as well, that during the first half of this year, the Europe where the sales have been more of a roller coaster up and up and down in recent years that has stabilized during the first half. So most likely there there is some recovery ahead now for the for the coming years. Yeah. Uh, North America, it's an important growth market yeah. for this industry. Uh, what is Harvey's position there, and what are you, your expectations for this market going forward? Yeah, that market has grown nicely, and Harvey has grown very very strongly since since basically going back to 2018 when they acquired this almost heaven sauna mm. sauna, sauna business basically uh, which which I mentioned mentioned before so the, the, the growth has been uh, extremely strong starting from that and basically doesn't show any <laughs> signs of easing easing so their position at the moment is if we look at the total market Marvia has maybe five percent of the market now but uh, but they are only so far being active in the traditional saunas which is roughly half of the market so a bit less actually so in in in, in that market the, the market share is already about 10 percent uh, we believe that the north american market will continue to grow quite well on uh, in the coming years and harvia will continue to grow and take market share there and especially they they will should take market share in the in the uh, two other sauna segments mm. being the, the steam saunas and, and infrared saunas, yeah. where in the steam side they made this acquisition in the U.S. buying buying a local local uh, uh, steam steam sauna firm in the in the summer, and then in infrared they they, they are bringing out more of their own own products. So through that and through the kind of continued growth, mm. of course, so in, in the traditional saunas, we believe that the grow, growth will will continue with a pretty good. Uh, pace and, and the market shares will continue to continue to increase there. Yeah. Yeah. So of course infrared and steam are the big markets there for mm. the moment, but the traditional sonas are are also gaining momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are all are, are all important. They're ba- mm. they're basically yeah, that's a, it's a it's a mix mix of them. Yeah. So how do we is the market leader in many markets, but what does the competitive situation look like? Yeah, like mentioned, Harvia is, is the biggest in the in the industry. Even even if you take into account the steam and in, in, in front side side, which which are you know a bit varying in mm. w- w- proportion to uh, position in in the in the different markets, but uh, but yeah, the Harvia is the is the biggest, and then the, the, the second second largest is is Klavs, and that was actually so, sold to that, that's a German company originally, which was sold to US last year, and then also. Uh, this sauna 360, which is a that has a mother company basically originating from Finland, but it's, mm. it's it's it it has both Finnish and Swedish and, and U.S. brands nowadays. That was also sold to a big big uh, U.S. player uh, a bit a bit over a year ago. So there's definitely interest in 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 in, in the sauna, towards the sauna market from mm. this larger U.S. kind of a, a bathroom or home improvement. Players, so, but, but so far that hasn't hasn't changed the competitive dynamics as such. So, so mo- most of the the competition is still quite small and and, and quite local. Uh, of course, in Finland we have a, a bunch of uh, small uh, small uh, um, uh, heater producers mm. which have like turnover around like plus minus ten million, you know, which are minuscule in, in comparison to, to Harvia. So, of course that brings the scale benefit, like I said so in the beginning, to, to, to Harvia, and, and they are in, 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 in that respect many ways more uh, able, f- for instance, to innovate, to, to kind of create new products and digitalization or, or grow, kind of put some money to international growth and, and so forth. So, so so far they are in a, in a strong position, but, but obviously we, we should remember that, that when markets are growing and like mm. especially the North American market that <coughs> of course attracts competition so so most likely there there will be some increasing competition as well in the future if if the <laughs> market Trend continues continue. yeah. this way yeah <laughs> but um you mentioned that the US companies have been shopping they've yeah. been buying so is there any sign or indication or, or have you considered that Harbia might be a target for somebody to snap up yeah, the market? Yeah, Har- Harbia might definitely be, be a target. That, that's that's quite clear and I, I think that, that 
has been picked up in the stock market as, as, as well, looking how the share has gone. But mm. at the current valuations, I, I would say that uh, you know, there's somebody kind of trying to buy hard. We are paying a premium to the current mm. valuation, which is already quite high, would, would put a very high price tag on the company. So I, I wouldn't, wouldn't So at least it. not now. Yeah, I wouldn't valuation. see that now, and li likely at these, these valuation levels that somebody would be willing to pay yeah. so much. But uh, strategically, yes, yeah, of course, why not, since the two main competitors have been, have been also sold. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that somebody has been looking at yeah. least for <laughs> Tarvi as well. Yeah, so there's mm. probably interest, but yeah. not with this valuation level yeah. then. Uh, so how do we also announce the new strategic focus areas mm. in this May, May 2024? Uh, what is your view on this? What Does this change anything? Mm, not so much. There was some adjustments towards the, the previous um, uh, strategy, but uh, nothing, nothing major. It, it's still kind of very much about expanding the product portfolio and, and expanding internationally. Perhaps one meaningful change was that, that, that for 10 years they have been talking about expanding kind of their presence in new markets and now, mm. now they say that okay, that we are basically <laughs> in enough markets. They are I think around 80 uh, countries at the moment mm. or so. So, so they, they have kind of enough markets to go to and now they want to really focus on the, on the ones which make a difference, so the yeah. bigger markets or the more potential markets and put their growth efforts there. And that, that's, that's of course, a, it sounds quite, quite sensible. And, 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 and then also maybe uh, for the last five, ten years even, the, the focus have been quite a lot kind of coming from a, a heater company with the traditional heaters uh, to expanding towards these full saunas, which they have been selling both in US and and uh, and Europe and and now, now down the focus is is also pretty much like I mentioned already in the U.S. to to also expand to to steam and, and infrared more mm. more prominently. So so th those are perhaps the the uh, most important changes, if you will. But those are also quite logical continuation of the of the strategy. So so nothing nothing major in in, in that respect. And, and and of course the the kind of underlying thing with which they need to remain also is the is this high operational efficiency mm. which which enables the the competitive pricing and, and good good margins which they have been able to, to have have thus far and on the yeah. financial target side they they increased their growth estimate like or target like like was widely expected and, and that's now 10 percent including acquisitions which look looks very very achievable to us so so no 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 big, big kind of surprise in that sense side okay and then finally, we already sort of touched on the valuation, but yeah. tell us a bit more about the valuation and what's our recommendation at the moment. Yeah, yeah, recommendation continues to be sell, so so the valuation is, is, is quite high. If we look at next year when we have the, the full impacts of the acquisition, or not full, but you know, we have it fully in the numbers mm. for the full year since it was mid, mid this year. Um, made the, the, I think the P is now somewhat above 25 for next year and then EV bit of something like 20 so those are fairly high and no, not not when you look at next year not not kind of absurdly high for for, for a very kind of nicely growing and, and high value creating company like Harvia but but still we feel it's 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 already prices in uh, quite quite a lot of the, the growth of the mm. of the coming years and hence hence the expected return is is, is uh, is very low, but like I said, it's it's a good company. It creates value and cash flow all the time, and over time, the, the multiples will will definitely kind of uh, moderate when when they when they move move forward. So so that's that's of course another angle that in in, in if we look long long enough, there is there is definitely also positive returns to be to be made in the, in the share. Yeah. So thank you. So Harvia, a good company, but with a high valuation at the moment. Read more in the extensive report in at interest.se.